Good afternoon. We are gathered here in the protective shelter of God's healing love to celebrate the life of Dr. William Hoover Gosnell, known to his wife, Wanda, and their friends as Bill, his sons as Dad, and his grandchildren as Grandpa. <clears throat> we are free to express our feelings, face our emptiness, and know that whatever our emotions, God cares. We gather here as God's people, conscious of others who have died and of the frailty of our own existence on earth. We come to comfort and support the family and each other in our common loss. We gather to hear God's word of hope that can diminish our despair and move us to lean on God to help us lessen our grief. It is a privilege to celebrate Dr. Gosnell's life and what a life it was, not just in length, but in breadth. When I read his obituary, I felt sad I hadn't known him. In speaking with his children, they mentioned he would have liked a stone in my garden. It reads, may you live every day of your life. Some people don't understand what that means, but they assured me Bill did just that, lived every day of his life to the fullest. But before I speak more about Bill, here's a poem I think he might have read to you at this very moment. When I have moved beyond you in the adventure of life, gather in some pleasant place, and there remember me with spoken words, old and new. Let a tear fall, if you will, but let a smile come quickly, for I have loved the laughter of life. Do not linger too long with your solemnities. Go eat and drink and talk, and when you can, follow a woodland trail, climb a high mountain, sleep beneath the stars, swim in a cold river, Chew the thoughts of some book that challenges your soul. Use your hands to make some bright day a thing of beauty or to lift someone's heavy load. Though you mention not my name, though no thought of me crosses your mind, I shall be with you. For these have been the realities of life to me. And when you face some crisis with anguish, when you walk alone with courage, when you choose your paths of right, when you give yourself in love, I shall be very close to you. I have followed the valleys. I have climbed the heights of life. After speaking with his family, it became clear that Bill had indeed climbed the heights of life. According to Bill and Rob, their dad loved to command a room. He was both ornery and funny and loved to tell jokes, as long as they had an underlying purpose. Bill lived quite a life before he moved to independence. Raised in Oklahoma, he married his high school sweetheart, Wanda, and they moved together to Illinois so that Bill could complete his studies in optometry. He finished his studies and then joined the Army, and together they lived both in New Jersey, my home state, and in the state of Washington. It was only then that they decided to move to independence. It seems the coast didn't beckon them, and so they chose the center of the country to live. Bill's chosen career seemed to fit him well, because it seems Bill could never stop helping those in need. Not only did he work as an optometrist until he was 85, he even tended to someone one Christmas Eve when she was having an eye problem. Rob worked with his dad for 32 years. They must have had a great deal to talk about in their spare time. That is, if they ever had any. Rob and his dad especially enjoyed photography. 
They even have dark room. Bill the second, they met, wanted to make sure he wasn't called Junior, remembers the two of them going to the Lake of the Ozarks in Bill's 56 Chevy and how his dad would make the car backfire as they went down a hill. Must have been great fun. But joyriding and photography were hardly the only things Bill did. He was an avid golfer, a trout and bass fish fisherman, a quail and duck hunter, just a few of the pleasures he had in his lifetime. In fact, his very last meal was lake trout. How awesome is that? In addition to doing the things he loved with the people he loved, Bill also found time to devote to service organizations. And in his spare time, he authored a book. One could never say he rested on his laurels. And both he and Wanda were artists, she in portraits, he in landscapes. But lest you think Bill slowed down after retirement, he didn't. One of the things he enjoyed doing was watching cooking shows. He embraced that part of his life just as he had embraced his earlier years. Bill and Wanda joined First Christian Church in 1961, just a few months prior to Rob being born. Bill even taught Sunday school for a while, despite thinking that religion engaged in too much duplicity. I think I would have enjoyed the challenge of speaking with him about that. One of his favorite Bible passages was the 23rd Psalm. Hear it now. You, O God, are my shepherd, I shall not want. You make me lie down in green pastures, you lead me beside still waters. You restore my soul. You lead me in right paths for your name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are right with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in your house my whole life long. Powerful words from scripture, words that remind us of just how special we are in God's eyes, that the God who created us is also the God who walks with us and like a shepherd leads us even through the most difficult of times, those times of darkness that we all experience at one point or another. But no matter how dark those times might be, we have no reason to fear because we know that God, our good shepherd, will never leave us. We have the assurance that God never forsakes us no matter what. I'm not sure we always know that. When things go well, we figure that God is on our side. But often when calamity strikes, we wonder where God is. But the psalmist assures us with his words spoken to God, that not only does God never forsake us, but God goes so far as to restore our souls. How wonderful. I like the idea of a restored soul. It gives us yet another chance. God's love for us never ceases. God is faithful and keeps God's promises allowing us to hope even in the darkest of times. But sometimes even such powerful words of love and hope fail when we are confronted with grief. It is painful to separate from those we love. Hopefully over time we come to realize that those with whom we've had meaningful relationships never really die. We carry them in our hearts wherever we go. They shape and mold us and make us the very persons we've become. I promised Bill's children that I would share with them some words spoken at the funeral of King Edward VII, words I think Bill may have said to them at this time. Hear them now. 
Death is nothing at all. I have only slipped away into the next room. I am I, and you are you. Whatever we were to each other, that we still are. Call me by my familiar name. Speak to me in the easy way which you always used. Put no difference into your tone. Wear no forced air of solemnity or sorrow. Laugh as we always laughed at the little jokes we enjoyed together. Play, smile, think of me. Pray for me. Let my name be ever the household word that it always was. Let it be spoken without effect, without the trace of a shadow in it. Life means all that it has ever meant. It is the same as it ever was. There is absolutely unbroken certain continuity. Why should I be out of mind? Because I am out of sight. I am waiting for you for an interval, somewhere very near, just around the corner. All is well. Let us now join together in prayer. Gracious, loving, and ever-present God, throughout our lives you call to us, and now in our sorrow we come to you. You are the comfort of the sorrowful. You are the healer of the wounded. We claim your promise of wholeness. We pray for all who are here, remembering voices and activities, embraces of love and tenderness. And we especially offer prayers for Wanda, who cannot be here. You accompany us in our sorrow, even as we remember your goodness. O oh God, our strength and our redeemer, giver of life and conqueror of death, we praise you with humble hearts. With faith in your great mercy and wisdom, we entrust William Gosnell to your internal care. We praise you for your steadfast love for him all of his days, and thank you that for him, death is past, and he has entered the home where all your people gather in peace. Let us now in silence speak the prayers deep within our hearts. Loving God, let your presence be with all those who mourn. Our prayer is that this family's grief may be softened by the words spoken here and the words exchanged with those who knew Bill. Let the family leave this place knowing that nothing can ever separate us from your love. It is with us in the best of times and the worst of times. Help us never to forget that. Each of us can be blessed to know that our loved ones are there, just around the corner. This life as we know it is not all there is. Bill knows that, and all is well. And now may God bless and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may God look upon you with love and grace and give you enduring peace. Amen.